I messed up already because this is, I said last week or the week before that I was going to preach things that I need to hear and that I love in my last couple weeks. And I asked Kara, what's your favorite verse of scripture? She said, be still and know that I am God, which was supposed to be the call to worship this morning, but we got last week's in instead of this week's. But be still and know that I am God. And that from then I went on to pick the other two lessons that we read this morning. Um, but the lesson from Mark's gospel, the stilling of the storm, is next week's gospel lesson from the lectionary. So we're sort of doing lectionary a little bit, kind of, not sort of, but we are. Now, Kara also likes one of my favorite poets, Mary Oliver. Any of you know Mary Oliver, her poetry? Oh, you ought to read her. She's wonderful. She died just a couple years ago. She wrote a poem about this stilling of the storm, and it's called Maybe. I'll try to read it to you this morning. Sweet Jesus, talking his melancholy madness, stood up in the boat, and the storm lay down. Silly he and sorry. So everybody was safe that night. But you know how it is when something different crosses the threshold. The uncles mutter together. The women walk slowly away. The young brother begins to sharpen his knife. Nobody knows what the soul is. It comes and it goes, like the wind over the water. Sometimes for days you don't think about it. Maybe after the sermon, after the multitude was fed, one or two of them fell, the soul slipped forth like a tremor of pure sunlight before exhaustion that wants to swallow everything gripped by the bones and left them miserable and sleepy as they are now be forgetting how the wind tore at the sails before he rose and talked to it, tender and luminous and demanding as he always was, a thousand times more frightening than the killer storm. I think the disciples were probably more scared by what Jesus did than what had happened before. Maybe you ever been on a ship or any boat and there's a storm on the water? Maybe you ever been in that situation? Was it like Rob? Uh, I was spoiled with the Queen Mary, but I really The Queen Mary? <laughs> but were you scared? Uh, no, I did really well. Okay, you did really well in that one. All right. Teresa, you had your hand up. You were, where were you? It was bad. How bad was it? Wow. My parents were on a cruise ship that went through a storm, and they said they watched the luggage hit one wall and the other wall, one wall, the other wall. Most of the glass were broken. The galley, so they didn't have anything to drink because they had to bring out paper cups because they broke the glassware. That's bad. Now, um, these are fishermen, folks. Fishermen in the first century, they were not on cruise ships. They were not on the Queen Mary by any stretch of the imagination. They're on a little handmade boat. It's rocking so furiously that they're scared. These are people who did this all the time. And that somebody I read in the commentary said, well, Matthew must have really been suffering. He was a tax collector. He wasn't even a fisherman. Because this is the same person who wrote that whenever he's on a plane and there's turbulence, he's fine unless he looks at, the, at one of the flight attendants and they look scared, and then everybody on the plane gets scared. That's what happened here. The storm was so bad they have to wake Jesus up. Now, why was he sleeping? What had he just done? Tired him out. He'd fed a multitude of people with just a couple of fish and some bread. He fed the crowd, and he's exhausted. He goes to sleep, and they're, they're scared to death. Because they're saying, don't you have going to die? And he just says to the storm, what? Be still, and it stopped. You ever in a storm that stopped that suddenly? I never have been in one that stopped that suddenly. My barometer at home is my dog. She knows if a storm is coming long before it gets there. She panics, and she's panicked for hours after it's over sometimes as well. But... Um, these are people used to storms at sea, and they're scared. But then he stops, and the, the translation sort of fails at one point because it says they were in awe of him. He said, no, they were terrified of him because he had the ability to stop the storm. Now, maybe you know the story of, we read about Elijah and Elisha and Jezebel. Do you remember that one from Bible school or from a couple weeks ago or anything like that? 
great story. It begins after Jezebel. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. He was how he killed the prophets with the sword, and Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, you're going to die by this time tomorrow, boy, for what you've done. What did he do? Remember that story? Nope. Let me tell you what happened then. Or did you, John, were you going to tell you what happened? Is that you that made a sound over there? He ran, he did, because he had had a showdown with the prophets of Baal, or Baal, however you want to say it, Baal. Because they were saying, our God's bigger than your God. And he says, let's have a showdown. And they, they make two pyres, two funeral pyres. They put an animal up there to burn. And they said they can do it without fire. They all they have to do is call down. And they, they're dancing around saying, oh, Baal, 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 Baal can do it. And Baal doesn't do a thing. And Elijah gets really cocky with him and says, well, maybe your God is in the bathroom. Real knee slapper in those days. I mean, we, we tend to look at scripture like, oh, it's so holy, we can't laugh. He says, maybe your God's on the toilet. That's pretty nasty to say. And then he says, okay, let's see what our God can do. And he says, pour water all over it first. So not only is he starting a fire, which is the command of God, he's pouring water on it. He starts saying to them, look what my God can do that yours can. He's really a nainer, nainer, nainer. And boom, the fire comes and it burns up. And then he takes the sword and he slays all these prophets of Baal. Have you ever had such a great day in your life that everything you said was going to happen happened and you stood there proud and tall, and then you suddenly said, why, 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 and you run away and hide. So he does, he goes into a cave, he's so scared. First he lies down under a broom tree and says, I'm done, God, just take me now. Have you ever felt that way, saying, I'm just done with all this, I just need to go away. But God sends an angel with a cake of bread and some water. Imagine if you're scared and you just want to die, you're so upset over everything, and you just feel like you've failed at everything you've tried. Suddenly God's making you hot bread and water. It's a great thing. Twice God does that. So come on, get up and go. He goes into a cave, and he's hiding in the cave, and then he hears a sound, and God calls him to the, to the edge of the cave and says, look over my mountain. First there is a storm, wind storm. It's so powerful, the rocks are splitting in half, trees are falling, everything's collapsing. It's like a tornado that comes through. Anybody here ever lived through a tornado or seen one? Those two are hidden from one. Was that like Sharon? It's terrifying, isn't it? You you've been where a tornado was? Oh, you're from Arkansas. That's right. That's where they all go through. And it's terrifying. But what does it say? God was God in the tornado? Was God in the wind? No. And an earthquake. And I've been through an earthquake. I was in West Virginia talking on the phone to somebody in Baltimore, and the ground started to shake. And he said. What's happening? I said, it's happening here too. It must be an earthquake. Books on my bookshelf. Just went all the way out to the edge and went back and back and back and back. I lasted 19 seconds. I timed it. But God was not in the earthquake. And then there's a fire. There's so many parts of our country now that are under fire and underwater because of storms and things. And God's not in the fire either. Where was God? In the sound of sheer silence or in the old translation, the still small voice same voice that calms the sea can calm the storm because God's not in the storm. People say to me all the time, the world's in worse shape than it's ever been. How many of you feel like the world's in worse shape than it's ever been now? Maybe you feel like we're worse off than we were in the past? Some people do, but in the past they crucified our Savior. I don't think anything ever got worse than that. The world's been a hard place sometimes for us, hasn't it? God is there, and God is ready to calm the storm. We just have to let God calm the storm. It's in us sometimes. Not just the storms out there, but the storms in us. They can be pretty fierce, can't they? I love this story because it talks about passing the mantle on, and I'm about to pass my mantle on to Lem, right? Because sometimes you get tired, don't you? Sometimes you're worn down by life in the world, but God says, I'll send somebody in your place. Heard of apostolic succession? Catholic doctrine talks about the Pope is always replaced by another Pope that God will raise up. We sort of have that in Protestant church as well where pastors get old, they retire, they die, and another pastor comes along who's called and set apart for the life and work of an elder in the church. That's what the question was the year I went forward. I was sitting in the 
congregation at the national, not the national cathedral, we were at the Shrine of the Immaculate Conception that year, and they had Jesus on the cross hanging out over the congregation. I looked up, just the bishop said, God calls men and women from the laity to the life and work of elders in this church, and if you're called, come forward. And Jesus looked at me, and I couldn't look away. I got up and I went. And God's calling people now. God's going to call kids from this congregation. They're going to grow up and surprise you. Maybe Theo would be a pastor one day. You think so, Theo? Theo got a pop. He's a guy, right? He's hiding from me now. What about you, Clark? You think he might be a pastor one day? It could happen. You don't know. I was your age, I didn't think it was going to happen to me, but we've got people to nurture. This year at the annual conference, over 30 pastors retired, me being among them. Only 14 new ones came up. We've got to encourage our young people to answer the call to God. And we encourage them by telling them the storms we face and how we face them and how God will say, peace be still inside your heart as well as to the storms on the sea. I got a lot of storms going on right now. I had my siding replaced this week. Some of you went by my house and said, hey, your house is white, now it's blue. But they didn't do it right. They didn't do it all. And I got to fight them. And then I went online to look at my contract to find out what the problem was. My computers crashed. I realized all of the vacation Bible schools in my computer as well. Like, wow, what else can go wrong? I've learned not to say that out loud too often, though. But God's going to still the storm, and we're going to get through it all, aren't we? That's why when we do the joys and concerns, we always start by saying thank you to God before we ask for things. Because this morning when I went to get out of bed, for the third time, my dog got me up three times in the night. She knew it was Sunday morning, I think. But um, I couldn't get up this morning. I was like, I didn't say thank you. I said, thank you, Lord. Get me up, please. And God stood me up again. Amen. So whenever you're in a boat of your own making, there's a storm of your own making, or a storm just takes over your life, remember the one who calms the storm. We're going to sing an old favorite of mine, When the Storms of Life Raging Stand By Me. Maybe you remember that one? Protestant, white Protestant people stand and sing like it's a marching song. When the storms of life raging stand by me, or a drinking song. When the storms of life raging stand by me. That was written. Written by Charles Albert Tindley of Tindley Temple in Philadelphia, who started as the janitor of that congregation. The janitor, and he worked his way to be the pastor. It's a lovely man. He wrote many great songs. And this is one of them. He didn't write it like that. He wrote it, When I'm growing old and people stand by me. When I'm growing old and people stand by me. When I've done the best I can and my friends misunderstand how who knows all about me. Stand by me. It's a little bit more of a still song that way. We're going to sing it however we sing it. Just listen to the words. And I want you to take it to your heart because Christ stills the storm. So here's a prayer that I want to pray with you all now. If you can remember, it's easy to remember if you know, be still know that I am God. Let me hear you say that one out loud. Be still know that I am God. Be still know that I am. Be still and know. Be still. Be. Sometimes we just have to be before God. God who knows the storms in your life will calm them for you. You just have to have faith in him. We give the disciples a hard time. Jesus said, where's your faith, guys? Come on. We've been through worse than this. But at least they knew who to wake up, didn't they, when the storm hit? Wake Jesus up sometimes, and he will come to your aid. He'll remind you that he's always been there, and he will always be there with you. If you can sleep through the storm, we can survive the storm. Amen? Amen. Amen. Please stand and join in singing. 